Very clearly, the Lord said to me, do not do anything sexual until you get married. I want you to wait until marriage. When he said that, I didn't even know this was in the Bible at the time. And I'm like, and I'm like, first of all, who's thinking about this? <laughs> I'm like, ew. Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. I thought my life was over when I got molested as a child. Then I got pregnant at 17, and my drug addict ex-husband held a gun to my head. But only God could give me the life that I have today, and you can have that too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw, and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. Dum, dum, da, dum. Dum, dum, da, dum. Why do we say that weddings are dumb? Why, why do we use dum, dum, da, dum in that song? I don't even get it. But every little girl dreams of dum, dum, da, dum. We dream of the wedding, the day that we walk down the aisle. And it's really not about the wedding, it's about the marriage, but we dream of the wedding day. But what happens if that day is taking too long? So I thought we'd talk about something formal in a casual setting because I know waiting is hard. I don't even like waiting in the grocery store line. I don't order food from Uber Eats because it takes too long. And I know if you are single and waiting on that right person to come into your life, people are gonna tell you, there's plenty of fish in the sea. But I mean, are there any good fish left? And I mean, what if you don't like fish? What if you like steak? I mean, is it time to like settle and go for one that's down here and I mean, this one just smells a little fishy and this one just acts a little fishy and oh, I don't even like fish. And here we are while we're settling our relationships. Then we start settling in our job, settling in our call, settling for a life that we really don't even know. I mean, because who even really gets that stuff, you know? Who gets the perfect mate? Who gets the perfect job? Because good enough should be close enough, right? Wrong. Oh, I wrote a whole chapter in my book called Marrying Mr. Wrong. And marrying Mr. Wrong is not worth it. It is not worth surviving in life. It is not worth the pain. It is not worth the divorce. I know it feels hard waiting, but God really does have a plan for your life. And that plan does not include settling. I know you've been on this journey of not settling. I know you think you're ready for this thing, but what if the best thing is right around the corner? What if God's plan for your life is so worth the wait? My friend Stephanie is on the program today, you guys. Seriously, she looks like a supermodel. She is successful. She is well-spoken. She is amazing. She was single for a long time. But you know what? She's gonna help you understand it was worth the wait. How could she be single and say it was worth the wait? Because she was just a gorgeous new newlywed. She just had a spectacular wedding to a fabulous man. And really, she waited for Mr. Right. I mean, you know, there were, there were opportunities to settle along the way, but she was trusting God. While she waited, she went to school. While she waited, she became a pastor. While she waited, she wrote a book. While she waited, she started a podcast. While she waited, she rocked that single life. And that's what I think God has you called to. I know she's gonna encourage you not to settle today. So you know what, I wanna meet Stephanie and you know this whole thing, it's put me in the mood for a wedding cake. Is there any wedding cake around here? say goofy actually um, goofy compassionate and adventurous it would be Paris I've always had a fascination with France and I don't know what it is it's just been since I was a kid and I haven't been but I'm planning to but that's that would be my choice I am a foodie <laughs> um, but my favorite food would probably be tacos and it's really because you can do so many things with tacos you can do breakfast tacos chicken tacos steak tacos I have like a bunch of clean ones <laughs> it's, it's, it's random I don't know why I love it but again context I'm Nigerian and Whenever you go to a Nigerian wedding, birthday, funeral, any kind of celebration, you have to spray once. And I have clean ones in my purse. <laughs>
girl checked your page and you just got married. I did. I did. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Now, are you 21? No, you could add 10. I, it, uh, it's my like 10th, you know, anniversary, anniversary. as a 21 year old. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are successful um, in ministry, but you're not like successful. Like, I don't know. Sometimes people are like successful and anxious and mm -hmm. assertive, but you're like successful and relaxed mm -hmm. and humble. And you're, you were 30 years old and, you know, thinking about getting married. So tell yeah. me what was going on in your head, what the opportunities, you know, were there opportunities? Why did you not get married earlier? How did you yeah. stay strong in your convictions until God brought you that perfect person? Yeah, no, it was very interesting. My mom, um, I'm Nigerian and part of our culture is calling your pastors for them to ask the Lord what is going on. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so my mom will call her pastor. There was a time my mom called her pastor. She's like, my daughter is not married. I don't understand it. <laughs> and he was like, your daughter doesn't even want to get married right now. <laughs> and she calls me, is my pastor right? Do you not want to get married right now? And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> no pressure, uh, mom. No pressure. <laughs> um, no, but it was really interesting. So I grew up in a single parent home. Mm -hmm. So I, I encountered the Lord at nine mm -hmm. and I literally, it was God raised me like as a father, you know, and when I was around 11 or 12, one of those years, I remember very clearly the Lord said to me, do not do anything sexual until you get married. I want you to wait until marriage. When he said that, I didn't even know this was in the Bible at the time. And I'm like, and I'm like, first of all, who's thinking about this? <laughs> I'm like, ew. But it stayed with me. Yeah. Like every, no matter whatever situation I found myself in, the older I got, yeah. it would just like come back as an echo. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're watching me. <laughs> like, <it's> just, <laughs> it was just this thing. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. So that navigated how I dated people. Okay. So if I was dating someone and they had this huge expectation for like, you know, when are we going to have sex? Mm -hmm. When is this going to happen? And I'm like, well, I'm waiting. I was never in like a relationship in my teenage years because most people had this expectation of, so how long is it? Six months, nine months, 10 months. Yeah. I'm like, it's marriage. And that's like, so you're talking about five years. <laughs> yeah. If you're 16, 18 years old. Yeah. 16, 10, they're, not you know? they're like, okay, this is not going to work. So literally I, I just like dated here and there. And so then fast forward to... So, but let's pause there for a second yeah. because I have an 18-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and, you know, boys are interesting. Yeah. How did you find yourself valued? How did you know you were valued? How did you know yeah. you were attractive if you put this line in the sand and it turned people mm -hmm. away right away? It, boys are interesting. And girls also have hormones. Yes, <laughs> you know? we do. So it, is, <laughs> it is a mixture of things happening. And you're, it's in a time where your girlfriends are telling you all the things that they're doing. And I think, for, you know, in that time, in the very young age, I learned my value in God. Mm. Um, and it was recognizing you have God, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, who is like, in the, in the past, I would just look at him like this person up there yeah. and there's this personal relationship and he's telling me like, I love you, you're beautiful, you're valued. Mm -hmm. And there was something it did for me that I could not understand. Like, it didn't mean that I didn't still go through like the regular teenage, you know, struggles of, because I, I did want like to be in a relationship or have a boyfriend, but there was this foundation in God that I had that mm -hmm. I am worthy regardless of what you give to me or what you don't give to me. There was something that was just deeply rooted there. I remember one of the things that the Lord told me even as a kid, mm -hmm. and He said, you're going to have a lot of experiences and your journey would not be the normal journey, mm -hmm. but it is to testify mm -hmm. to His love yeah. and His ways, yeah. not because, and even when people ask me like, how are you a virgin? I'm like, not by choice. <laughs> I will tell you that. It was <laughs> well, that makes it sound like no one was interested and I can look at you oh, and, and tell by, you that's oh, not true. not by choice. But I knew that part of my calling in God 
was to model something. I would ask God practical questions and I'm like, Lord, like my friends are having sex. Why mm -hmm. can't you, why don't you want me to have sex? And he would speak to me, not even in a spiritual place, like mm -hmm. this is the command or this is my will. And he would tell me about even my personality. Mm -hmm. And he would be like, daughter, the things you don't know about yourself, mm -hmm. in the place that you're in, you have an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. If you, if, if I let you just do you, <laughs> <laughs> you like set, you would literally have a sex addiction without even knowing it and there were things that I started seeing that I literally did have to break off this addictive personality mm -hmm. where if I had something oh it kept going it kept going it was I remember in college my freshman year when I was like, you know what, Lord, I, I'm bored. I want to have some fun. And I'm thinking I could just, <laughs> I could live. I had that conversation with yeah, him though. <laughs> I was like, you know what, I know you see me, but you need to take a break. And I am going out and I started drinking and that became its own addiction. Yeah. And I had to break that up. When I was watching pornography at the time in my life, that became its own addiction. And so there were things that he was telling me mm -hmm. also from a practical place mm -hmm. that you don't even know you. Yeah. And what I learned even in my journey is that even when we go back to the commandments of God, they're not just this spiritual lofty mm -hmm. things. It's for us. Yeah. It's like you can't make me more God or less mm -hmm. God. Everything I tell you is literally because I'm looking out for you. What I love about Stephanie's story is how honest she is. And because she was able to do this thing, mm -hmm. she, she wasn't perfect. She didn't do all no. the things, you know. She, <laughs> Alcohol got a hold of her, pornography got a hold of her, but somehow she was able to stand in this space. So don't judge your life by Stephanie's life. Hear the message of what's being said. Yeah. Don't judge your life by my life. That's not our job, right? To judge each other. Yeah. The message is, is, is this. Whatever it is in your life, you can reclaim that right yeah. now. You can get in right standing right now with God and start over and start fresh. Take a look at your life right now. Do you like where you're going? Are the people in your life helping you get to where you want to be? Have you ever heard two people talking at the lunch table and wished you could pull up a chair and just learn? This is your opportunity. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Studies have shown that you are the sum of the people that you hang out with. I mean, we all need people in our lives coaching us, teaching us, mentoring us, cheering us on, and making us into better people. And that is why I created the Circle of Friends. It's a chance for us to connect and increase the level that we live on. Here's what you get when you go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle and become a partner. Every month we'll have live coaching sessions, workshops with Zoom calls between us where you get to ask questions, engage, learn, or I'll bring on a guest influencer like Joel Osteen, Christine Kane, Mike Todd, Sarah Jakes Roberts. They'll share some of the most valuable lessons they've learned, just like you were sitting at that table. We've got a best of Nicole library with a bunch of teachings. And best of all, you're not just a friend, you're a partner baked in daily prayer, getting weekly emails. And your monthly contribution is a seed that helps us be on TV and provide books to prisons, recovery homes, and people who need them. If you're ready to get in a group of friends who will help you be all that God made you to be, and be a difference to others at the same time, this is it. For less than the cost of buying bubblegum, you can change the course of your life. Just go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle and become a member today. Trust me, you'll be so glad you did. My dating life is something I never really wanted to share. I mean, mainly because I stink at it. I stink at dating. I mean, I just pick the wrong guys over and over again. And I don't just date the wrong guys. I married the wrong guy. Oh my gosh, he was the wrong guy by a long shot. And getting divorced. I want to help people not get divorced because divorce, you know, it'd be humane to like take a scalpel and cut your heart out with no anesthesia. That would be humane, but no. Instead, it's like taking a dull spoon and scooping it out of your chest. One spoonful at a time. In my book, I Will Thrive, I talked about when I met David, uh, the guy I married that was right. We've been married for over 25 years now. Thank God, because I'm so bad at dating. I thought I was gonna be mad at marriage because I was mad at marriage the first time. So when I met this blonde haired guy with this dark haired friend, they were both named Dave. I was not kind when I talked behind their back. Me and my friends called him dumb and dumber. He would give me his phone number and I would keep throwing it away because I didn't want to be hurt anymore. And if I turned him down and never gave him a chance, I mean, I guess he couldn't turn me down. But somehow 
I would go out to dinner with the wrong guys. I had spent almost a year dating Mr. False Hope, right? It's this guy, again, the right medical initials after his name. He treated me great. He was super cute. And then after a year, he said, since I'm never getting married, I'm like, a uh, year long relationship told a single mama what? What in the world? Why didn't you tell me that before? So here I am repelling the good guys. I was telling the right guys, no. I was telling the wrong guys, yes. I was wasting years of my life before I finally say yes to David. So he gives me his number over and over and over again. And I, I finally, I had this whole situation happen where I got this death threat. It's a whole story I talk about it in my book. I got this death threat. I didn't want to boys at my house because I, I was scared to be home alone. So my friend said, let's call Dumb and Dumber. So sure enough, Dave and his friend Dave, they come over. And while he's at my house, he and my son just have this vibe. And he wasn't like trying to mack up on me. He was searching for a cat. Like, okay, he wants a pet. He gets along with my son. So we finally went on a date. Well, at the end of the date, I kiss him because somehow in one date, he started hitching his arms on the back of his chair and rocking on the two back legs of his chair back and forth. I will never forget him doing this because I thought, number one, his balance is pretty good. And number two is like, if he falls on his behind, I'm going to lose it and laugh. And I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I'm not going to be able to help myself. But somehow in that hour or two at TGI Fridays, I went from having a frozen heart to being melted. I was like, I am in trouble. And then he kissed me. And when he kissed me, I said, okay, look, here's the deal. Uh, I knew this was coming. I'm not the kind of girl who like pays for dinner with a guy with like, I said, I've been down that road and here's the deal. I'm not having sex until I'm married. He's like, really? I said, no. He's like, why? I'm like, because that's not what I do. I'm a Christian. He's like, I am a Christian. I go to church twice on Sunday. He's like, I am a worship leader. I'm like, bro, you're going to have to prove to me that you are a worship leader because I don't think I believe you. I think you're just trying to like, now you're macking up on me. He's like, no, come to my house and watch this VHS tape because it was 25 years ago. I was silly enough to fall for the come to my house part. But when we went there, we honestly watched the tapes of his church services and him leading worship. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this guy is a Christian. He is on fire. He loves Jesus and my heart is melting. And he came in for another kiss and he got another kiss, but that's all. He also got clarity on who I was, what my boundaries were and what I was willing to do. You know, I think one of the very things that got me out of the relationship with Mr. False Hope, because I had to cut off a physical relationship with him, was one of the very things that endeared me to the right guy. You know, sometimes you think you do the right things and you're gonna repel everybody, but really God's like, if you'll just trust me. You know, I was scared of my past. I was scared of what happened to me. So I kept beating myself up over it. But God knew I've got you. I've got the best waiting in the wings. I actually put God's best for my life off for five months while he kept giving me his phone number. You know what I think right now? There might be somebody in your life already. <laughs> Their hair's not cut just right. My husband wasn't when I met him. He, they're not wearing the right clothes. My husband wasn't when I met him. They're not saying the right things and my husband wasn't when I met him. But sometimes you just have to see through that exterior a little bit because I had a diamond in the rough. That's what God had waiting for me all along. And I believe he's got the same thing waiting for you. It's worth the wait. We are here to bring some hope to the single folk. I know it feels like all the good ones are gone. You just married a good one. I did. How did you find <laughs> this guy? Well, you know, I found him in the midst of um, <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> uh, but because right before I met him, first of all, I was like, there were a few people that I entertained and it was, God was like, nope, 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 nope. And I thought they were great people, but it was not, it didn't match, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's their faith level and different things. But this particular person, it was a baby shower, right? It, it was the most interesting baby shower experience. It was a baby shower on a boat. And somehow like the other people who were invited could not, did not show up. Um, and it ended up being just the parents 
him and I and a friend of mine. So it was a baby wow. shower. It was a five. very intimate <laughs> baby shower. Exactly. You. It sounds like you were set up by God. I was. It, it was the, because you would think my friend was like, "Are you sure they didn't set this up?" And I'm like, "No." Um, but we met there, and because we're on a boat somewhere in the waters, we're forced to talk to each other. Yeah. Um, and just hearing his language, like I could just from hearing how he talked, you could hear this is someone who knows the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is someone who has a love for God. This is someone who is kind. But there were so many things that connected. It just I was like. Wow, it, and it, nothing like that has ever hit me so strong. Yeah. To the point I remember texting my mom, I was like, mom, I just met somebody. And this is, you know, me moving way too fast. Because <laughs> I'm like, we have not even really like got, done anything, right? How, how old were you when you met him? No, we met last year. I do believe that God does everything in seasons. Mm -hmm. And there are seasons where maybe what you need in that moment is healing. Mm -hmm. um, there are seasons where this is not like, if God brought something to you before it's time, it would be messed up, mm. you know? So I think being patient with yourself, because one thing in marriage that really was interesting to me, I remember one time when I was asking the Lord, like, God, if you don't want this for me, just let me know. Like, mm -hmm. did you change your mind? And he jumped ahead of talking to me about marriage. And he told me how old I would be when I would have my, when I would become a mother. And I was like, God, I'm asking you if you don't want marriage from me. And you're not even acknowledging that. You're telling me how old I would be when I become a mother. Yeah. And so then I'm doing all the calculation. I'm like, if that's the case, <laughs> I at least have to be married by 30, 31. And then I meet him at 30, you know? And what that spoke to me was God always knew the season mm. and it was just to be patient with knowing that this is already written. Like mm -hmm. God already has, he sees what the story would be, but there's a season for it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so happy, like looking back, I'm like, I'm glad I didn't settle. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't look at some of the people that were like, oh, this could be cool. You know, we get each other or whatever. We are born in the same month, <laughs> you know, <laughs> weird stuff. And I'm glad that I didn't take that bait of, oh, let me just, because I knew I had a conviction, this is not it. Mm -hmm. And even when I would come to the Lord, it's like, it's not it, you know? But the beauty for me was deepening my trust in God. Yeah. And the fruit of this marriage is like, God, I trust you. Mm -hmm. I, I could trust you even with bigger things because yeah. every time I came to the Lord, he would always show me the promise. Mm -hmm. And so that means the plan never changed, but it's like, can you be patient and just wait it out? What I hear you saying for the people out there who are like, no, seriously, there is no good ones left. Mm -hmm. You're saying it's worth the wait. It is. It absolutely is. Settling is, is always an option. Um, however, you know, when you look back at your life, if you were to fast forward to the end, uh, you gotta look back and say, okay, what would I regret? And the things you say I would regret if I didn't do, those are the things to do. You are worth more than just settling for that job, that relationship. It's worth the wait. Good things take time and you are worth every single minute that you're waiting for it. Believe in who you are, believe in who God created you to be, believe that there is the very best life for you and position your best self to receive your best life. Have you ever felt like you were sucker punched by life? Everything's gone great. And then I don't know where, oh, bam. You get knocked down by somebody. You thought, you thought they loved you. Maybe you made a mistake and the consequences were really big. And if so, I can relate. I mean, my birth dad didn't want me. I was molested as a child, raped at 13, and became a pregnant, unwed mother by age 18. I felt defeated, I was trying to survive. But no matter how buried we feel in life, God has a way to help us dig out of the hole and stand on the top of the mountain with our arms raised in victory. You see, we're not meant just to survive in this life, we're meant to thrive. And that's why I wrote this book, to help you brush yourself up, stand on your feet and move forward in your life. I want this for you so much. I wanna give you my book absolutely free. When you go to freethrivebook.com right now, you get the I Will Thrive hardback book, an 11 video book club series, and eight of my very best teachings to help you begin to thrive again. Here's what people are saying about how the book helped them. I started reading your book at 
8 o'clock this morning and I finished it at the room. <laughs> you read the whole thing straight through. It was awesome. It's an awesome book. And I think when I finish mine, I'm going to have to pass it on to somebody else. I want it back, but I've got so many people that I want to read it. Right now, go to freethrivebook.com to receive this special limited time offer. I want you to have this free book and bundle. You, you're not meant to survive. You're meant to thrive. Stephanie's going to pray for you in just one minute. But before she does, maybe you feel like it's taking forever. Maybe you were like ready to settle. Maybe you were ready to say yes to what you should say no to. Maybe you were ready to say, I mean, close enough, right? But let's relate this to some other areas of our life. Settling isn't how God intended you to live. He has exceedingly, abundantly above in your job, in your house, in your car, in your dream, in your goal, in your relationships with your parents and your family. After all, Jesus gave us his very best. He gave us Jesus. And Jesus died for you. So God thinks you're worth dying for. So if you need a sign not to settle, here's your sign. It's me. This is it. You know, my friend Tilly, she messaged me on Instagram and she told me how she had found the show just a few days earlier. And she said, I found your show right when I needed it so bad. You know, when you give a one-time gift to the show, when you donate at NicoleCrank.com, you make all this possible because a lot of people get paid to be on TV. We actually pay to be on TV, but our whole goal is to help more people. And the more TV we're on, the more people we can reach. So thank you to everybody who has given. Your $20, your $50, your $100 one-time gift is amazing. And then my circle of friends. Oh my gosh, you guys, you give $27.77 a month. It's a high value partnership. I send you emails every week that I type on my own little laptop, send out to you. I do Zoom calls and coach you once a month, either myself and then I bring friends with me, Mike Todd, Sarah Jakes Roberts, Devon Franklin, uh, Michelle Williams from Destiny's Child. We sit there, talk to you, we coach you, we pour ourselves into you. I wanna say thank you for making life change possible. And I love in my circle of friends, making life change more possible for you too. If you want to be a part of the circle, go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle. Right now, I want Stephanie to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful for everyone who's watching this program. Yes. And I thank you, Lord, that even through this conversation, that they will not just hear us, yeah. but Lord God, they will be reminded that you are mindful of them. And so I pray that you will give them fresh eyes over the season of their life right now. Yeah. Fresh eyes to know the things that you have required of them to do. Yeah. Fresh eyes to know that no promise of yours mm. would ever fall to the ground, yeah. but that you are faithful to your word. Yeah. And in the season that you have ordained it, mm. it will happen. Yeah. And so I just speak peace over them right now, mm. that anything that has been warring against their peace, warring against the promise, that we silence that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So good. <gasps> I want to do more shows with you. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. That'd be about. fun.